Hi everyone, it's great to have you with us for Faith at Home and continuing our focus this month on kindness. Do you remember what kindness is? You got it! Showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. It's important to show kindness to the people around us, like Jesus did. And Jesus gave us the best example of kindness because he showed it to everyone, everyone, and showed that they were valuable and important. And especially Jesus was kind to his close friends and family and to anyone who came close to him as well. And so our story today is all about how, with God's help, we can be kind to the people that are closest to us like our family and friends. And so we're hearing a story about Naomi and Ruth and how their kindness was shown. So let's take a listen to our video and remember to find those opportunities this week to show kindness. What on earth was she doing? So messy. Ugh. Hey, welcome to Storyland. Sorry, this place is a little bit of a mess. Today, we're talking about kindness, while we take a look at the story of a woman who really knew how to lend a helping hand. There is so much. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Thank you for your help. <laughs> You're welcome. What happened? I had to run to the garden store before they closed. Oh, looks like you've already started. Hi, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. Today, we're talking about kindness, which is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. As you've done by cleaning up my mess. Anytime. So what are you making and what did you have to buy? I'm making seed surprises to give away when I go hiking this week. I'll leave them at the trailhead so anyone can take one home. Seed surprise? Yeah. It's something that started in Japan. Seed surprises are actually called suchi dango, which means earth dumplings. So, seedy, earthy dumpling surprises. What's the surprise? An explosion of wildflower beauty. I'm still lost. You can help me put them together and figure it out. Let's make it. In order to make the seed surprises, you need all my leftover construction paper, water, a blender, cheesecloth, wildflower seeds, and some silicone molds. And how does all of this become an explosion of wildflower beauty? First, rip up the construction paper into small pieces. So this big? Yep. And once the blender is about halfway full, you need just enough water to fill up to the paper. Like this? Exactly. Now, Turn it on. And blend until it's a smooth mush. <laughs> Definitely mushy. Now it's time to strain the water out. With the cheesecloth. Exactly. Ready? Yes. Now, squeeze out as much of the water as you can. That looks like modeling clay. Kind of feels like it, too. Do you mind pouring the water out of the bowl? Yeah. Thank you. I got the bowl. Time to add the seeds and mix it. Did you wash your hands? Always. Then we put the seedy mush into the molds? Exactly. I'm going to get flowers from my flower. And I'll make a butterfly for our butterflies. Now, let them dry for 24 hours. When they're done, they'll look like this. Then what? Put them anywhere you want flowers, but do ask permission first. Just toss the seed surprise into a patch of dirt or grass, and as the paper decomposes, the seeds will open and flowers will grow. And it's really cool that it uses up leftover scrap paper. Speaking of gathering leftovers, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Ruth in the Old Testament. After God led the Israelites out of Egypt into the wilderness and finally to the land God had promised to them, the people were ruled by judges. But even in the promised land, the people experienced times when there's very little rain and not enough food. During one of these times, a man named Elimelech and his wife Naomi moved to the land of Moab where there was more food. They had two sons who both married Moabite women. After a few years, the three men died and the three women were left there on their own, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. After Elimelech and his two sons died, Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth were left alone. But Naomi heard that God had provided food in her homeland, so she decided to travel back to Bethlehem, her hometown. Both of you go back. Each of you go to your own mother's home. You were kind to your husbands who have died. You have also been kind to me. So may the Lord be just as kind to you. No, we're going with you. Why would you come with me? I have nothing to give you. At last, Orpah said farewell and left to return home. But Ruth was not ready to go. Don't try to make me leave you and go back. 
Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Naomi could see that Ruth was not going to change her mind. So together they began the long, dusty journey to Naomi's home. Naomi, is it you? Are you really back? Where's Elimelech? What about your sons? What happened, Naomi? Don't call me Naomi. My life is very bitter. The women were astonished at how Naomi had changed. But Ruth continued to show love and kindness to Naomi. We need food. Let me go out to the fields. I'll pick up the grain that has been left. One of God's laws said that harvesters should always leave behind some grain that their neighbors could gather if they were in need. That's what Ruth was heading out to do. Gathering grain is difficult work. Ruth was in for a long, hard day. Please, may I pick the leftovers? Oh, uh, our master is kind. You may gather anything on the ground that you find. Ruth worked hard in the heat of the day, stopping only once to rest in the shade. As she continued to gather grain, the owner of the field, Boaz, arrived. After Boaz greeted the harvesters, he asked them, Who is this young woman in the field? I don't recognize her. Oh, that's Ruth. She's from Moab. She came back with Naomi. I know Naomi. Elimelech was part of my family. I will speak with her. Ruth. You are welcome to gather here and in all my fields. When you are thirsty, get water from the water jugs. Rest when you need to. You are safe here. Sir, why are you being so kind to me? I'm not even from here. I've heard about your kindness to Naomi. I know that you left your family and your country. May the Lord reward you for what you have done. Boaz even made sure that his men left extra grain behind for Ruth. When Ruth returned to Naomi that evening, Naomi was amazed to see how much grain she had gathered. Where on earth did you pick up grain today? I went to the field of a man named Boaz. He was very kind to me. Naomi's attitude began to change. May the Lord bless him. The Lord is still being kind. That man is a close relative of ours. He's one of our family protectors. Ruth continued to gather grain from Boaz's fields. And in time, Ruth and Boaz were married. Ruth gave birth to a son named Obed, who ended up being the grandfather of King David and the great, 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 lots of greats grandfather of Jesus. The Lord be praised. Thanks to Ruth's kindness to Naomi and Boaz's kindness to Ruth, Naomi was able to let go of her bitterness and welcome joy back into her life. The end. Wow, Ruth was so patient with Naomi. Patience is a great way to show kindness. And by choosing to stay with Naomi, Ruth showed Naomi that she still mattered. So, what's our part in the story? No matter how much we love our family and close friends, Sometimes it's actually easier to be kind to a stranger. We see our family and friends at their best and their worst, just like Ruth and Naomi. But you can still choose to be kind, even when someone you love is driving you nuts. Yeah, when my brother gets grouchy, it's annoying. And then I get grouchy too, and then, you know, I snap back at him. Instead of being annoying back, you can say something encouraging or do something nice for him. Yeah, to be honest, it's so easy to bug someone you love because you know them so well. Like making annoying noises. Or poking them in the arm. Choosing kindness means you're not gonna push any of those buttons. Plus, you can choose kindness by thanking your family or friends when they help you. Especially your parents because they do so much for you. Saying thank you is a great way to show them you value them. Sounds like you've got it. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. Be kind to the people closest to you. It'll be like a kindness surprise growing all over your home. Speaking of, I got to get ready for my hike and give away these seat surprises. Can I join you? Of course. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you, See you next, next time. time. So what kind of flowers are going to grow from these? It'll be a surprise, but it'll also be beautiful.